Oh my god, today's just gonna be a spectacular day because I'm gonna go into the Atlantic Ocean, like, uh, in the Caribbean Sea, and then I'm going to, uh, take as many lionfish as I can out of there as, as much as humanly possible, and I'm gonna relocate them to, uh, the Indian Ocean where they belong. And, uh, why am I doing this? It's because, as you all know, lionfish are invasive species. They eat the fish that live there, and, uh, yeah. It's, it's like, they got, like, sold on, like, uh, pet trade uh, a long time ago, and, like, people liked them, they thought they were cool because of the spikes they had, but then they got bored of them and let them go in the ocean because, hey, they thought they're fish, but they didn't think of the environmental imbalance it would cause, and sure enough, we, you know, we humans are suffering the consequences, even though I would never have anything to do with no environmental imbalance. And uh, it's like the lionfish, how are they causing the imbalance, you may ask? Well, they eat all the fish that they can prey on, like the smaller fish. And then when the bigger fish try to get something to eat, they can't find enough food because they can't eat lionfish or else they'll get stung. And uh, yeah, so the lionfish are gobbling up all the fish. And yeah, it's a real problem these days, along with... Uh, other invasive species, like the Japanese honeysuckle vine, uh, the emerald ash borer beetles, and, uh, uh, what's another invasive species? Basically a lot of beetles, and, uh, rats, and yeah, rodents are definitely some of the world's biggest problems these days, and, uh, it's just a reminder that when I jump into the ocean and save and relocate all those lionfish, it's another reminder that we have to do as, as much as humanly possible to protect our big, blue, beautiful planet. <laughs> now I'm gonna get into the portal. Wild Hollands, nurturing all breeds of dogs. Wild Hollands, running away from wild hogs. Wild Hollands, saving all species of frogs. Wild Hollands, yeah. <laughs> then. Now that we're here, time to turn into a sea turtle and swim out to the coral reef to meet Connie the sea turtle police with his partner, the sunfish. Good thing I have my sea turtle blood accessible and my radioactive blood collection. Uh, aha! Stop! Oh, sea turtles are meant to stand upward. And uh, will I grab it on myself for a reef-saving voyage? Oh. <sighs> Morning, boys. Glad you could come to our humble home and help reduce our population of red lionfish. It's our pleasure, man. Glad you could... It's our pleasure, man. Glad you could have us come out here. Anyway, AWI, you might want to get out your net so you can catch the lionfish. Good. Now, without further ado, let the lionfish relocation process begin. Gotta hold my breath for this part. Cedars, sea turtles can hold their breath for four to seven hours straight without going up to breathe. <gasps> Ooh, there's one. Get ready. <sighs> now time to call Toadette so that she could get Cupcake Monster to teleport a tank on a raft so that the lionfish have somewhere to stay and the ocean cops can wash over it. Toadette, can you get Cupcake Monster to teleport the tank and raft? Also, some jellyfish donuts for the 911C duo. Yes, I will! A uh, heads up, Cupcake Monster! Energize and zap it! <laughs> Success! Officers, we shall return. Take care, boys! We know you'll do good! Wow, that's a lot of lionfish. We made a lot of progress. Don't forget, we made a lot of progress by making sure the tank doesn't tip over while enjoying the jellyfish donuts. Just enough to supply a turtle and an ocean sunfish. How could we forget? Now time to get Toadette to transport it back. Toadette, we're ready. We're on it! Energize! <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay, okay! <clears throat> Good work, man. Oh, golly, I'm having so much fun helping out ecosystems. It kind of reminds me of when we went back in, in time and saw extinct species. Toadette, do you think we could- Go back in time and meet more extinct species? Say no more! For the time these transporters in the garage, the sooner we get moving, the better. So who do you want to help today? The woolly mammoth, aka 
Mammothus primigenius. Another thing, the word mammoth is derived from the Russian word mammont, which means enormous in Russian. Plus, many discoveries of woolly mammoth remains took place in Siberia, Russia. Anyways, it's time for us to bundle up and pack up, because temperatures and during the last ice age dropped so low that it was 7.8 degrees Celsius. Brr! And there's no food out there. Also, who want to join up with me? May I? Absolutely. Well, let's go. Alrighty. Now that we're prepared for these harsh, finger-numbing weather patterns, which is quite different than today because of climate change, let's set the timely transporter up to take us to the time of last ice age in the Pleistocene era, which was 116,000 years ago, and the location is the Russian plain. Whoa, it is wild weather we're having. Good thing we got these snow goggles to keep the wind out of your pupils. Also, I'll hack out the time machine to make sure nothing bad happens with it. Thank you. Now it's time to set out and rediscover some hairy pachyderms. Also, viewers, woolly mantis have two layers of fur along with the outer layer being 20 inches thick to insulate their large bodies in the chilly temperatures. And the inner layer, which is way shorter, but it still keeps these icy denizens toasty. They additionally have shorter ears compared to African elephants, which helps them retain body heat while still being able to hear each other over long distances. They made rumbling sounds that can't be heard by the human ear along with trumpeting sounds. This helps them stay connected with their and heard in their environment. Is that because uh, we can't hear them because uh, they're extinct? Oh no, Toda, we're just making assumptions on their behavior based on what we know about elephants today. Also, even though a woolly mammoth is roughly the same size as an African elephant, it's more closely related to an Asian elephant, hence its shorter ears. Now let's set out and find those big bushy behemoths. Oh, the wind is so strong. Mammoths can handle anything out here. Wow, when will we ever find these guys? Wow, to think we couldn't find them even though their fur came in different shades, much like how our hair does. <sighs> I don't know how much longer I could go on. <sighs> Let's stop it up a lunch break. I got a big and delicious ham sandwich with an apple and a helping of chocolate cookies with some tea. Also, mammoths use their big tusks to dig for food under the snow like grass, shrubs, flowers, moss and other kinds of plant material and they had to eat all they could find in order to survive they even had a shoulder hump to store fat where, where for f when the food was scarce during ice ages just like camel humps now enough of me talking because i've got to eat to keep up my strength Alrighty, now that i'm done we can continue our relentless search for these hairy almighty beasts oh where are they whoa i don't believe it mammoths it's like a dream come true. There they are, a bachelor herd, meaning a herd with only male mammoths. And there's Fabio, the biggest, sexiest, and shaggiest mammoth out there. He uses his big 13 foot long tusk not only to find food, but also to ward off predators like saber toothed tigers, wolves, and cave hyenas. Fight any rival male that dare crosses his path and attract mates. The bigger the mammoth and his tusks, the better the odds are for him to get more mates, which is a big reason why all the ladies love him, because <laughs> he's Fabio. Uh-oh, crow magnets, aka early cavemen of Europe. They're after the mammoths using their tusks for defense. A double I, when I throw you, shoot out a cage at Fabio, and when you land, put it inside you, and then rush back over to me around the herd. <laughs> oh, I mean, no, as he's making it back, I'm gonna zap one of the mammoths and turn it to one. Man, it feels so toasty. No chance I'm hitting the beach. Two big reasons in the mammoth's extinction are climate change after the ice age and overhunting by cavemen. For some reason, natural insulation feels more comfy in my book. Mammoths were crucial to humans' rise in civilization. We depended on them for food, shelter, art, and tool creating as cavemen. We're almost back according to AII and Toadette. 
we're back. Also, did you know that we know so much about mammoths because of the frozen mammoths scientists found in ice in Russia? Heck, we even knew about them as cavemen when there were cave paintings of them found by scientists. So it comes as no surprise that they're popular. Anyways, uh, as we get back, I'm going to turn back to normal in the timely transporter. And when we get back, we should uh, we, we should probably take uh, the uh, Fabio the Mammoth all the way to... Uh, the uh, extinct uh, animal karate master and no the extinct animal karate master is not an extinct animal you'll see we got him in the trainee now let's get back in the plane because this could get hairy, no pun intended. Before I let out my next client, I would like to formally introduce myself. I'm Kicker the Cassowary and I train extinct animals and modern day animals to survive in their natural or as yet to be habitats. I teach them all they need to learn to be successful and not only make me, but Darwin proud. Now time to let the training co process commence, since we've got mostly everything on mammoths covered. Man of my got my work cut out for me. To be continued. 